Hey, what's up, guys? This is A Fairy Nineteen Ninety Five, and this is my first episode of a new series I'm starting. It's called I Discuss, and as you see from the pictures that are going on my laptop in the background, and the title that you previously saw before you actually began on this video, is that I'm going to be discussing how an Iron Man suit is possible in a world and time like today. And uh, these are actually facts that have been thrown out by a, a bunch of other different people, not on YouTube, but um, physicists and um, a bunch of uh, different people in the engineering fields. And, and I just wanted to share this with you guys. Um, and uh, what first uh, that some people are actually uh, saying about the Iron Man suit is that uh, the ability to fly, which the, first of all, the ability to fly as a human is only brought to, brought to us by a, either a pri private plane, propeller, uh, propeller, propel plane, or jet plane, um, commercial aircraft, and all that stuff. That's the only, um, that's the only ability of people will be able to fly uh, at our time, and that's what some people think. But there are uh, companies and people that are actually building, um, not suits, just uh, machines, or uh, um, I guess you can say uh, technologies that can able, enable humans to fly without the aid of uh, wings or uh, without the aid of um, an actual aircraft. Um, first of all is uh, this guy, I forgot exactly what his name was, but um, he built his own jetpack, sort of kind of, I guess you could say jetpack, um, that uh, has wings. It has just one whole entire wing and it's four, I think it had four on it, it was four. Um, they're model jet engines that you could use to build your own RC jets. And you put four of them on there, and you can actually, everybody calls them the Jetman. I think it's in Switzerland. And I'll put, it, I'll put links to all this stuff, all the videos that I can possibly find of these guys. And this guy has four jet engines on a wing, on a strap to his back, and he can actually fly. Uh, due to the surface area of his body and the surface area of the wing, um, he can actually uh, get lift and, um, and downward and upward drafts on, on the wing enabling him to fly and, it's, and actually uh, due to the engine's thrust it actually pushes him through the air. Um, another uh, person who's actually done this, or not person, just a company, um, is a jetpack company that you, uh, I think some of you know, and the jetpack company, what it does is that they have jetpacks that have hydrogen peroxide inside of them and when hydrogen peroxide touches silver it pretty much uh, creates uh, carbon dioxide, and when carbon dioxide uh, is actually inside of the tubes, or actually inside the tubes that are on the back, and once the carbon dioxide hits the silver in the tubes, it compresses uh, to a very, very, very powerful, um, I think it's a couple of thousand PSI, and it shoots out through the nozzles. Um, and I think they said it's like having a Ferrari or a, uh, a Dodge Viper or a Ferrari on your back, strapped to your back and making you fly. That's how powerful the thing is. And uh, it shoots the uh, gases um, down to the ground and it lifts you off the ground about, I think, 30 to 40, 50 feet. But the only problem is, is they can't find a, uh, a good way of fueling the system for a long period of time. Usually it's like 20 seconds for like just a, a small flight, just 20 seconds I think is the highest they've gotten so far. But in the near future, it should be able to go up to a couple minutes. And that is just uh, what I can find or I can tell you about uh, human propelled flight. The second aspect of Iron Man that people are actually questioning is strength and how the suit is able to pick up so much massive and, and uh, weight bound things just like a car. And that was demonstrated in Iron Man 1. And uh, well, the uh, solution to that is actually um, what you can find in a suit called the XOS Exoskeleton, designed and built by Ra the Raytheon Sarcos team, based in, I think it was Idaho or Ohio, I'm not exactly sure, but I'll put a link to them, and it's called the XOS Exoskeleton, and it is able to pick up, uh, I think, 200 pounds without the human feeling uh, anything. I think that's not up to, I think that's just what they uh, demonstrated. And it's just 200 pounds what they demonstrated. They didn't show the full potential of the suit. The full potential is in the long run that you can actually pick up a, a car. You can pick up the front of a car. You can pick up a car without even breaking a sweat with just the suit doing um, all of the work. And it is a full-fledged suit. It's not one that com covers the whole entire body, but you can wear it. It's a, uh, a wearable robot, in it, and it's not an exoskeleton like Iron Man, but it's, it's getting there. But their uh, prototypes that uh, they're working on aren't going to be close to what their final products are going to be. The final products are going to be full-fledged suits that the military can use. Um, other suits that have actually adapted to the uh, muscle-bound, uh, strength-wise thing is um, there's one suit. It's called the Hulk. I'm not exactly, and yes, it's called the Hulk. It's uh, actually H U 
LLC. I'm not exactly sure what, what company uh, designed this, um, but uh, it's just a, a bipedal uh, walking system that helps you out with walking uh, for long trains and everything. The, uh, another thing that uh, I found was actually a Boston Dynamics suit. Um, if I'm going to put a link to all this stuff, just don't worry about it. But um, Boston Dynamics suit, I'm not exactly sure exactly what they called theirs. But theirs is just a uh, just like a bipedal system, just like the uh, Hulk is. And I think the Hulk is theirs, I'm not exactly sure. Um, I haven't read up on this in a while, so uh, sorry if I'm wrong. But um, yes, uh, uh, Boston Dynamics is also uh, making a suit. And uh, it, there's a bunch of other robotic things that Boston Dynamics does that are pretty awesome. If you don't know what Big Dog is, Big Dog is a, uh, a robot that uh, has the legs of a dog. It has everything in it. Or a deer or a dog or something exactly like that. But it's, an, it's like a robotic animal that can carry up to about like 500 pounds without even breaking anything. Another thing is the, uh, or another aspect of Iron Man that people are actually questioning is the power. Um, what's powering the suit? Um, many people say it is a fusion reactor that has been miniaturized to the point where it's able to put out massive amounts of electricity um, and power to power the suit. Um, I'm actually doubting that. It's not a fusion reactor. A reactor. I don't think it's a fusion reactor at all. It is. It does deal with uh, fusion, but it's not a nuclear fusion. I think it's a cold fusion, which is a uh, what it is is a nuclear process that uh, is at room temperature. So it's cold fusion, that's what I think it is, because if it was a regular nuclear, re a nuclear reactor, you'd have to find a way to contain all the heat and disperse the heat throughout the suit. Um, you could use that for a heating system for the suit when you're in a cold condition, but I don't think that a fusion reactor, or a nuclear fusion reactor, would be um, quite a good way to uh, power the suit. Cold fusion, on the other hand, like I said, is at room temperature. And uh, room temperature is around 76 degrees, which is a very, um, a very cold um, temperature, um, considering that uh, nuclear fusion runs at hotter than the sun, or as hot as the surface of the sun. But uh, cold fusion has not been reg or, or completely figured out yet. People, scientists uh, have tried experiments with cold fusion. This hasn't worked so far. There's still people trying to figure it out. Um, what I want to do in the future is I want to find out what cold fusion is and I want to figure it out, but at the moment I can't do anything about it. Um, but uh, the only reason why I think it is cold fusion is because when you see in the first movie, he says that there's palladium inside the arc reactor when he's building it inside the cave. Now palladium does deal with cold fusion because palladium is the uh, only alloy that you can use in cold fusion. And that's the only way, that, that's the only reason why I think it is because cold fusion uses palladium a palladium electrode, electrode, and that's what I think exactly what he, um, why uh, he puts palladium in is because it's a cold fusion reactor that he and uh, his dad and Anton Vanko and um, uh, have they have figured out in the past, and uh, I think that's all, the only way I can describe or figure out the um, power. And uh, I think that's pretty much it. If you want any more questions on any of the things that I've said today, please leave a comment. Send me a message on YouTube. I don't care. I'm starting this this series, is, and, and like again, it's called I Discuss, and it's just going to be about things that I care about, things that I like to talk about, um, things that are uh, in my daily life, maybe news or something. It's just every episode is going to be uh, just something new. So, and I just wanted to start this because you know I'm, everybody knows that I'm building an Iron Man suit out of Connects, and um, and I'm, I want to build one. I want to build a real, real working one by the time I turn about 30 years old, 25, 30. Now I'm, I'm gonna work on. I'm worried. I have already. I have all the ideas in my head about how everything works. Um, I, can, I don't have more time. Oh, well, actually, I do have more time. Uh, YouTube, if you do not know, YouTube has made a 15-minute time limit. I was gonna make it like a, a thing where I was gonna make this 15 minutes, but that's gonna be too long, and I gotta go eat dinner because I'm hungry. So until next time, this is Afair1995 in my episodes of I Discuss. Thanks for watching.